I can read one verse. Nankabala verse T. I close my eyes and read it again. I end up reading it. I found that I cannot go to the next verse. Because what is important is you can't finish the Bible. You can't finish the Bible. This is the Bible. The Bible is more than the books you have read at school. It's all about your life. Every day. If you hear me say amen. I'll entire amen. So let's go back on preaching scriptures. Are we laying up a moral rule? I'm telling you, you are blessed. You are blessed. What is it? Blessing? blessing is not a car. Chufa jo asikoloi. Asinto. It's not money. All these things, you will leave them here. Blessing is the ability of God in you. We are saying you are blessed. We are saying you have got the ability of God in you. When we bless you, we are inviting God to give you God's ability. If you are hearing me say, Amen. Let's leave that because you have been praying and I believe you are blessed. By prayer, you will pray. I believe you are blessed. You have got the ability of God in you. Amen. 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 Let's read First Samuel. Samuel chapter 3 verse 2 chapter 3 verse 2 let's Samuel. read from there verse 2 verse 3 yet it happened that at that time as Eli was lying down in his own place now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And the oil lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down on the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. That the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know or personally experience the Lord and the word of the Lord was not yet revealed directly to him. So the Lord called Samuel a third time and he stood and went to Eli and said, Here I am for you did call me. Then Eli understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be that if he calls you, you shall say, speak Lord for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came out, came and stood and called as at the previous times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hear is will ring. On that day I will carry out against Eli everything that I have spoken concerning his house, meaning family, from from beginning to end. 
Now I have told him that I am about to judge his house forever for the sinful behavior which he knew was happening because his sons were bringing a curse on themselves, dishonoring and blaspheming God, and he did not rebuke them. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the sinful behavior of Eli's house, meaning family, shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the Lord's house, but Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here I am. Then Eli said, What is it that he said to you? Let's pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I think today I'm going to fight some demons here. When I was coming here, <laughs> I began to tell the brother that I was with that after I drink a juice, I felt like I would be vomiting. I say, there might be demons that I'm going to fight. Especially, especially of pastors. But uh, I think those demons, they must run away now before we pray. Let's meditate the scriptures. There's something that we normally read about this part. I want to show you the first thing that has really touched me. If we read verse 7, it says, Now Samuel did not yet know or personally experienced the Lord and the word of the Lord was not yet revealed directly. There is Samuel and asking Katsiwe Kabuyena, Hoba Akopan Le Morena, Hoba Utsibalin Chila Morena, Kauban Leli so Tului, Habu Zimoyen. So now we know the secret of what was happening. That's the reason why he ran to Eli. But the scripture that opened our eyes is verse 2. Marali scripture Mato, verse 2. It says, Yet it happened at that time. As Eli was lying down in his own place. Eli now his eyesight had began to grow dim. And he could not, he says, he, now his eyesight could not, yes, and he could not see well. Verse 3 says, Verse three, And the oil lamp of God had not yet gone out. If you look at that verse, a very sera. shocking verse. And the oil lamp, le lamp la ole. it said the oil lamp of God. Le lamp la ole, le lamp reina, la of the place where they were sitting. It says the oil lamp of God le lamp la ole, la had not yet gone out. Ne li so timi. And Samuel, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the Ark of God was. So in other words, Eli was sleeping somewhere. There's a place where, where he used to go and sleep. But Samuel was sleeping in the temple. And in the temple there was 
an oil lamp of God, which was burning. But Eli was sleeping on his bed. If we can read it, the Bible says, Eli was, was lying down in his own place. And where he lied down, he had a problem with ice. Whoever is having a problem with eyes is also having problems with ears. Lying on his own place. And when God calls Samuel, we see Samuel running to Eli's own Samuel place. We were not told that the place where Samuel was sleeping. We were, not, we were not told where Eli was sleeping. Whether there was a light. There. We are hearing about where Samuel was sleeping. There was the lamp oil of God. That was we, we understand the reason why. God was no longer speaking with Eli. He had his own places. He forgot to stay where the lamp of God was. I also think, I also think that it was because of his age that when you grow old, you start to be experienced. That though the lamp of God has not gone off, the one who was supposed to take it off was God. You could still go away and sleep on your own place. So, in other words, if the lamp of God was still burning, God was still having business with them. But uh, he could not wait for the labor to go. He traveled to go to sleep on his own place. And we hear that the same God who was speaking with Samuel came and told Samuel as a Samuel, Samuel what I'm telling you, I've told that man yeah, This is not a new story. I'm telling you what I told Eli. But Eli could not listen. Now, I'm going to perform this thing against him with Now, I'm going to punish him. And I'm telling you, because you are in a place where the lamp is burning, and you have not left there. So in other words, you are expecting me to speak. That one is sleeping. He must carry on sleeping. I want to show you something on the verse. Look at this verse. Verse 10. The Bible says, Then the Lord came and stood and called at the, at, at the previous times. Samuel, 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 Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak for your servant is listening. Do you know what happened here? If you can read on verse 9. So Eli said to Samuel, Go lie, said Go lie, he said to Samuel. Go lie down. And it shall be that if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord. Do you know what Eli was saying? Eli was saying, Hey, the lamp of God is still burning. But you, go and be in a position of sleeping, but your ears are not Expect something from God. Be in a position of sleeping. 
But make sure that you are attentive. Go lie down there. Be ready to listen. But we don't know when God will talk. If he can talk. Let me read that verse again. Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. It shall be that if he calls you, he shall say, Speak. If he calls, the light is still burning. But if the Lord de de decide to talk, be ready to answer. You know when I was reading this, I realized why we're we failing to hear him. We are sleeping in our places. We are not sleeping where he is. Number two, we find ourselves sleeping and our ears are sleeping. We need to sleep, but our ears must be open. Ready to hear when he calls. Because we decide to call or speak, he speaks by his own time. The Lamb of God is still burning. If truly is burning in you, be ready for him to talk. He has said his own time. So today, let's talk about listening. Because listening is so important that God wants to speak. But sometimes we are not where he can speak. Where there's not the lamb of God. We need to be in where there is a lamb of God. That is burning to be in a wrong place. And where the Lamb of God is burning, that's where the Temple of God is. We are the Temple of God. The temple of God. And the Lamb of God must burn in us. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Many people have been told things, but they are not confirmed to us. Why? Because we are not ready to listen to you. If we are ready to listen to God, the Lord will find someone that he will confirm. He will confirm to that person. If you are hearing me say amen. Yeah, because sometimes when you get a new word, you will think that this is a new thing to you. It's not. God has been speaking to other people. To you is confirming. And listen to this. When he speaks, he says, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I have not done it. Are you listening, Samuel? Samuel says, yes. I love Samuel. When now God spoke with Samuel, after he listened, he says, this is my word. I'll keep it to us. I just want to hear the next thing. What is it that the Lord wants to do again? Because this is against my master. So I'll keep it to myself. Let's read this verse. Tassima said, my friend, are you listening to the Lord? Look at this Proverbs 2 verse 2. 2 verse 2. Are you listening So that your ear is attentive, so skillful and godly wisdom, and apply your heart to understanding, sit, seeking it conscientiously and striving for it eagerly. Mm. If your ear is attentive, your heart will begin to function. In other words, your ear affects your heart. Uh, I'm just beginning to understand that all of us, if we can listen, will understand that the gate to your heart is your ear. If, if you want to change your heart, check what you are listening. Check what you are listening. Because you will find that Look at that. It says though that your heart is attentive skillfully so that you get wisdom. You need to understand that your heart will be effective for yourself. I want to tell you what is, well, how your heart is like. Your heart does like this. You know, when you are standing like this, your heart does like this. Like this. That's your heart. Where you are looking, sometimes your heart is so faster than your eyes. You choose. You choose where your heart is directed. So if you fail to captivate your heart, you'll find that you are everywhere. You lose control. Many people who are Christians, they lose control. Because they failing to contain or direct their heart. Listen, you are created to direct your heart. If not, your heart directs you. Your heart can take you anywhere. Your heart can take you anywhere. If you just look at this, it will just tell you, look at the beautiful look at that girl. Look at that girl. You, are, you, are like this. you can find yourself proposing this one to go to a proposal. You, 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 you find you, you have got a career. Yeah. Call, you, you are called proposal. You are called proposal. By, by your heart, you are feeling. But when you maintain your heart, you, you are, it's coming from the issue of your ear. Because now you receive words. They come to the heart here. 
And when they are built strongly, they affect your, your, your eyesight. Affect your because this thing you have to come to your mind. From there, affect your eyesight. I can give an example. The Bible says that uh, he who look at the woman is already committed at it. Do you know what's the meaning of that? Because it has started from your ear. It came to the heart. Now it is in the mind. It reflected your eyes. What you see on the eyes already. You know, it is the last stage. You've really committed that in the heart. You fail to control it. Now, look here. We are failing to listen to what is important. Today you are affected. You have, you have failed to listen to what is very important. And now your eyes are there and there. And everything is ringing from your brain to your eyes. Where S is bringing sin in your heart. So look what happened to Samuel. Samuel was told, listen. Samuel was told, listen. Don't sleep with your ears. Do not sleep with your ears. In other words, your eyes also will be very important. You are going to sleep, but don't sleep. You'll be in the position of sleeping, but your ears and your eyes must not be close. There are people who just sleep with their body. But their eyes and their ears are close. But here you are told. Sleep, Samuel. But make sure that your ears, because if you don't sleep, there's no time to pray. Yeah. Your ears will be very close. Yeah. 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 You must find your way. So if you want to be effective and seeking the best to apply your heart in a good understanding, make sure that your ears, this your ears must be attentive. If you are hearing me say Proverbs 1 verse 5. The Bible says the wise will hear and increase their knowledge. The wise will hear and increase their knowledge. Because now you are, you are determined. When you are a fool, it's not coming from the brain. It's coming from your hearing. It's coming from listening. You know, you know, even here in our country, our country is having a serious problem. And that is why our people are not so much wise. The, the people of the north of the world are better than us. When I was in the UK, I saw people. They read walking. Read walking like this. Read walking. Here, here, we have a problem of a slogan. Slogan. Amanda. Slogan. Slogan. Amanda. 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 If you go to UK, how are you UK? You see people, they enter the tube, the <inaudible> trains, they are called tubes. They are no one talks with another. But here, even our songs, they repeat themselves. They, they don't teach us anything. When you are singing a song here, you are hearing maybe disco or whatever. You just hear, wire, wire, wire. 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 From the do 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 from there you are dancing. You don't learn anything. You are... Foolishness is not in the brain. Foolishness is in the ear. What you listen determines you. 
You cannot sit down and you listen to the people who are preaching. And you find that you don't grow up. It's not possible. It's you are listening to stories. That's why you become a story. You become a useless story because you are listening to stories. There's nothing that is effective that will come from you. You become a useless person. Not because of the brain. Everybody is having brain. But what you are putting out to your heart, it is the one that is affecting you, destroying you. If, if you are hearing me say, Hearing you. The wise will hear and increase their knowledge. If you walk with the wise, you will be wise. Walk with the fools, you will see. I'm sure today you must learn to listen. Don't waste your time watching so pieces and stories. Fitness of the people who are asleep. You have to gather knowledge. Uh, if you hear me say amen. And you will be wise. We need Christians who are wise, not Christians who are fools. Today, we don't even have presidents or ministers who are Christians. And it's because of what we are preaching to you. Receive, I receive. Receive, I receive. How do you receive anything when you are doing nothing? So it's time now that we wake up as Christians and we do something. If you're hearing me say it. Yeah. I'm sure I'm not hurting you. So let me hurt you more. Let's read Luke 8. Verse 18. This will really help you. Luke 8, verse 18. So be careful how you listen. Are you seeing the verse? So be careful how you listen. For whoever has a teachable heart to him more understanding will be given. And whoever does not have a longing for the truth, even what he thinks will be taken away from him. Now we are understanding that how we listen makes us to be profitable. To be profitable is how you listen. When we talk about how you listen, we are also questioning what are you listening? You need to be having a teachable spirit. So when, how you listen, you go to a level where oh, I'm not just listening. I want to learn. So whoever is having a teachable spirit will learn something. The, the, the Bible says what? It says to him more understanding will be given. I, I, I perceive that understanding uh, takes to a level of comprehension. It's as good as you are seeing a door. But the one who's teachable will understand this door is different with that one, with this reason. But to the one who doesn't learn, this is a door. How you behave is coming from what you have learned. Your character also sums up to that. So we, we, I mean, what is important and what I want to tell you is the Bible says these ones who are not longing for the truth even what they have will be taken away from you. So listening is important because today now we know that it's not because of prayer that you have what you have. It's because of how you listen. It's not because of prayer that you have what you have. But it's because of how you listen. I told my pastors that I was telling you, you see this one and this one and this one. They are close to me. They always listen. And that's why they are becoming successful. They 
They report everything. I said, this pastor, they report, I look at that. Said, this is good. Let me pray for this pastor. What is it? Why? Because they want to be listening. They want to be listening. We don't want just to do this. I want to hear if this is important. Let me send it to him. If there is something wrong, he will tell me it's wrong. If you are hearing me say amen. A teachable person does not have pride. And that is the person that will have everything. That's the reason why many people have things and those things become a curse. Become a problem. Let's read and carry on. Say a race. If we read Mark 4 verse 24 Mark 4 verse 24 I just want to show you something very important. Read that verse. Then he said to them, mm. pay attention to what you hear. Did you hear that? Read it again, ma'am. It's important. Then he said to them, uh -huh. pay attention to what you hear. Mm. Carry on. By your own standard of measurement, that is, to the extent that you study spiritual truth mm. and apply godly wisdom, it will be measured to you and you will be given even greater ability to respond and more will be given to you besides. Amen. Did you hear that verse? Little. We are determined Renari by how Bonchua. we hear. How we hear spiritual, spiritual matters. I want, I want to tell you something. That you must know that. Listen. This is how God works. God will put you here where there's nothing. And he check if you are listening. If, if you listen to him, you listen to him, he lift you up for the better responsibility. Do not try to take the things of that one to yourself. It is very dangerous to promote yourself. You, are, you need to be here and listen to him. He will give you more responsibility. If it lifts you here, you won't fall. It's him. I, I don't know if you're hearing me. When you are faithful here, he you lift you again. He you again. Lift you again. Uh, I've been working with my son. He said, he said everything is on stages. I he has been repeating this thing. But it is coming from listening. If you are in stage one, if you are listening, you can be promoted to stage two. God is not interested of just lifting people. Because everything needs management. He, 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 want, he want you to be lifted so that you can manage the better. If you just lifted, 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 and put you to a blessing that will manage you now, you are still going to fall down. So he lifts you to be able to manage. Everything needs Everything needs management. If you fail How in management, you fail to have a blessing. So he can leave you. Challenges come. Problems come. Things come. He leaves you so that you learn how to manage the situation. Are you going to be the same person who will do what you do even when he bless you or you lose blessing? But what is happening to you is not a failure. No, it's a responsibility that God wants to give you. So check what you are listening. What is happening to you? you? You might have lost things, but you are not a failure before God. God wants to entrust you with a better responsibility. As long as you listen to Him, you are determined 
for a better responsibility. And the grace of God is upon you. You are the one who determines it by how you listen. The problem we have here today is when, when things are tough, we say, where is God? No. You are in a probation. You have been checked. Can I tell you this? I perceive that a person who's facing challenges might be challenge. having more angels than the one who's enjoying life. I'm telling you now. Because they are there to minister to the person. And they even want to kill that person. I don't know if you're hearing me. So you have a flourishing life. So you might be having one angel. But the angels Mara, might be there to this one who's facing a Lord. Facing a Lord. Because, because he can be killed by, by and thinking and you enter ha. the road. The, the angel can stop you. Another one is here. Hey, you can make it. Hey, hey don't, don't worry. Don't listen to that. Satan is bringing many things so that you get depression and you die. Depression. So it's time now that you allow God to finish with you as he wants to take you out. Don't try to be a different person. Be yourself. If you hear me say it. So the Bible says, pay attention to what you hear. Why? Because you're going to be discouraged. You're going to be discouraged. Things are not working well. You'll be discouraged. Right now, your business is not moving well. You're questioning yourself why my things are like this. There are things that are working against you. But when you're a child of God, you pay attention to the scriptures. The Bible says, He is with me until to the end. So I'm not yet finished. I'm with my God. And as I'm with my God, He will guide my steps. So I'm I'm not a failure. I mean, this time God God want me to be. We must stop complaining. Responsibility is coming. Um, let me give an example by a small church. Small church is a very nice church. You know everybody is there. You know everybody is there. You know Maria is there. Joyce is there. It's a very good thing. But there is a serious temptation. Because that small church, I'm just giving you an example. Because there's nothing called small church, but I want to tell you. Because you, you are staged there. On that thing you call it small church. Where you are being challenged, if you can do Better responsibilities. There's nothing else in church, but it's small church. Because you know Maria, you know whom. But we are being checked. Now God bring 30 out of 30 you have. God check you. What is it? What are you doing? They are being checked. You begin to see you change as well. Let's subtract 15. Let's allow this to be 45. You are being checked. You are worried. I used to do the same thing. I used to preach in the same way when people are many. But you are being checked. You are being checked. This is God who determines your destiny. If you are hearing me say it. So God wants to give you a better responsibility. Pay attention to what you hear. Let's just read another verse. Revelation 3, verse 20, we know. Go to Lot 3, verse 20. I wish, Behold, I, I wish you from here. When you hear someone speaking with you, check the word of God. Is this, is this season with salt? Which is the word of God. You are hearing stories that affect your faith. You are hearing other issues affect you. So people are being used. Just read that verse. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in and eat with him, meaning restore him, and he with me. Did you hear that? Amen. Thank God, because in Amplified, you are reading, it says, I will restore him. This shows that we are not what God wants to be. Unless our ears are open to his word. We are not restored. When you were born, things were stolen. So now he says, I'm standing at the door. I'm standing at the door of your heart. No key. But if you hear my voice, it, it's important that I want to enter your heart so that you become what you are born to be. Be restored to yourself. Be effective and live according to his will. We might be all of us here, but some, some of you are caught. Others are food. Others are food. Others are food. It goes by, are you, were you brought back to your senses where you have to live a life of his will? Not long I was, you know, I was asking myself, why, why do we call some things miracles? Because the moment when you become full, you, fullness of God is in you. Because you are going to fulfill His will. Or you will do what you are created to do. You to copy anyone. If God fills you, right? By himself. When you go out here, it's no longer you coming out. It's God coming out. In other words, you won't live your life for yourself. You will live for his will. Do you know that uh, it's possible you can be alive in this world before God you have never lived in this world. What God wants to do here is to make you what you have created to do. It must happen to you. What, is, what, is, what you have been created for. What you are born for. People must see it. Right now you are trying to do this because you, know you saw someone doing it. that. Have you ever found that you are trying to register a business of transportation but you don't have a transportation truck? You just have papers. You are a business but you don't have the business. So look here. The business was start in you. Created with it in you. I'm just giving examples so that you understand. It must start in you. So even when you are holding a paper only, and you don't have a truck, you will be offended why God is not with you. You will thank God my business is booming. My business, I'm seeing it. I don't know if you are hearing me. Because it is not starting from the paper. It is started in you. You are created with it. If you are hearing me say So, Listening is very dangerous today. You have changed your mind because people spoke things that you discovered. You wanted to do this business. You heard someone say, ah, look, you say you're a pastor. Look, there's no congregation. Someone divide the church, this, that. If it, you are born with it, no one will stop you. I'm born with something here. It must manifest. Say it must manifest. If you are hearing me say amen. You cannot be discouraged when you see that it is not working. When you are born with it in you. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you are born with it, you cannot be discouraged. Do you know why you are discouraged? Because you pay your, your attention to wrong things. 
Because that mission, that plan, that, it was born by the wind that enters your heart. Now when the wind blew, challenge comes. You are still seeing ahead of where you are going. You cannot be troubled by what you are seeing because you understand what God said. And you believe on what God said. If you are hearing me say it. If you are hearing me say it. I want to tell you that consistency is very important. And consistency is coming from believing oh, yeah. and trusting the one that will do. If he has spoken the word and you heard it, that's what matters. You just carry on. Hey, God said, God said I'm not afraid. I cannot be shaken. So check what you hear. Tell them, check what you hear. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I, Mama will, uh, will question, why are you laughing? What are you laughing? I shedding when Mama I normally laugh say. alone, to be honest. <laughs> I normally laugh alone. Because you get a revelation alone, you understand? <laughs> you don't get it from somebody. <laughs> you so I have to laugh alone. She just said, ah, <laughs> you end up laughing. <laughs> so my mom will always say, what are you like? I have to go on the other side <laughs> to, <laughs> to where <laughs> she's in the room and come and tell her, this is what I'm laughing. Mama will say, will mama laugh at it. So, but you, you are waiting for someone to tell you And the same person will try to and tell you stories of another person. Tomorrow will tell you bad things. You are hearing stories. There is no word that falls to the ground. If you hear any word, it affects you. Don't ever think words are very small. They are better than AK-47. Someone can just say, hey, you are white. You know what you are going to do? When you reach home, you will take and the mirror and look at yourself if you are white. White are very dangerous. So now, you must check what you are hearing. Check what you are hearing. I don't know if you are hearing. What you are hearing. Is that what you are hearing? And that's how you can be successful. That most of the time, we are influenced influence wrongly. Somebody just come and say, you are beautiful. You change how you walk. From there, you affect your spinal cord. affect your spinal cord. You, you, you are listening to things that really confuses you. Someone will just tell you things. You agree on those things. It's time that when someone says, you know what, you are beautiful, you say, no, no, no. I'm a child of God. I'm the spirit. Did you ever see the spirit? How can you tell the spirit that is beautiful? So that's how you will live your better life. Someone will just say to you, shame. 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 Those words will never leave you. Quote the scripture. Shame is not mutu. for you. Shame. You are the head, you are not the tail. So take things so very serious. If, if you are hearing me say. Okay, let's read another scripture. Zabu, yeah. 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 Yama 28.9, it says, He who turns his ear away from listening to the law of God and men, even his prayer is repulsive to God. Ah, today we know why God does not answer our prayers. We have turned our ear from his prayer. From his word. You know, Joshua was told this thing. And Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 8. Meditate the Lord. Meditate, Meditate the Lord day and night. And your way will be prosperous. Now we know how we can be rich. Blessed. 
we know now. We've been thinking about, I can do this business, I can do that. We know the truth now. The moment when you listen to this, that is very important. When you stay in the way, stay in the way, you discover yourself. You discover, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh, this is me. Do you know why we don't know ourselves? Because our eyes on people our eyes are on people. Okay, this one is coming with this car. I love that car. This one is this house. And I want to have that house. So here the Bible tells us turning away from listening the law of the word of God. If you turn away even your prayer your prayer is repulsive. The, the Bible didn't say it's abomination. Yeah, on this, mm -hmm. this, on this amplifier, it says it's repulsive. In other words, your prayer come back to you. You pray a prayer, it comes back to you. Have you ever found you are in a fasting? Your prayer is like you are fighting a rock in front of you. It's like there's a rock here. You are praying, hit the rock. Come back to you. So it's time now that we stay in the word. The word is our lives. Can we read this scripture? Uh, John 10. John chapter 10. From verse 1 to 5. John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. It says, mm. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, mm. he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, uh -huh. but climbs up from some other place, Yes. on the stone wall. That one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, the protector and provider. The doorkeeper opens the gate for this man mm. and the sheep hears his voice and pay attention to it. And knowing that they listen, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out to pasture. You can stop there now. Provision is coming from hearing. Yeah, you, here you, here you, here you can hear two things. Two things. Either you are stationed one place or you are called by your name Sometimes when you're in a place, one place, you question why I'm in one place. You question, here, you have to wait for the voice of the shepherd. You wait for the voice of the shepherd until you are called up to a pasture. Sure, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's two places. You don't just find yourself lingering. No. No, no, no. Look, look here. The, the reason why we linger is because we are not allowing what God wants to do with us when we are stationed in one place. When we are stationed in one place, God is teaching you to hear his voice and you hear it clear so that when you say, Maria, come out now. This is a green pasture. I don't know if you're hearing that. I can say that. Today you must learn to accept to stay one place when nothing is happening. I mean, digging deep in scriptures until they become part of it. When you are doing the small thing you do, and you hear his voice, look here, you are called to be a pastor. One man spoke about the issue of uh, 
you know the, this big bed that many people associate themselves with it. It says for that bird to fly higher. For a long time. And allow the old feathers to fall. And he wait for the new ones to grow up and become big. From there, you fly up. That is the eagle. But, you know, when other bears are just flying, the eagle is waiting. The hunger is hitting inside the cave. Sometimes when God put you aside in a cage, in a cage, in a cage or in a cage, in a cage or in a cage, in a cage in a cave or in a cage, don't forget the word of God. Listen. Listen to them. Listen. Listen. There will be a time where Lord will say, now I'm lifting you to a greener pasture and you will make it if you are hearing me say it. When Jesus was speaking about it, he said, there are thieves and robbers. They are there to confuse you. And when you get out, you are devoured. Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. What we are learning here today is, God wants us to move from a green pasture to another green pasture from faith to faith, from glory to glory. But we must have a heart of weight. Have a heart of weight. If you hear me say it. Read that verse, read verse 9, Mama. Yes. Nine. Mm-hmm. Verse 9, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever. And will go in and out freely and find pasture, spiritual, meaning spiritual security. Amen. 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 Let's stop there. Amen. Today we know the tough times you were going through. I already told you that they are not tough times. It's a test for you. It is a test. That's what I'm going through. It's a test for better responsibility. What I faced before was a test for a better responsibility. There is life that is destined for you. There is a life that was set for you. And that life is truly you hear the voice of God. It will work for you. God bless you.